Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodholt. Bad guys of the Bible. That's the theme of this week's Pastor Gary Live, and there were lots to choose from. Even more, there are many things we can learn from them, too, because sometimes we're a lot closer to them than we are to the heroes. Let me read the story of one of those bad guys, a man named Cain. Now the man knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have produced a man with the help of the Lord. Next she bore his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a tiller of the ground. In the course of time Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel, for his part, brought the firstling of his flock, their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but for Cain and his offering he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. The Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is lurking at the door. Its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain said to his brother Abel, Let us go out into the field. And when they were on in the field, Cain rose up against his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, What have you done? Listen, your brother's blood is crying out to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it will no longer yield to you its strength. You will be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Today you have driven me away from the soil, and I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth, and anyone who meets me may kill me. Then the Lord said to him, Not so. Whoever kills Cain will suffer a sevenfold vengeance. And the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who came upon him would kill him. Then Cain went away from the presence of the Lord and settled in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Well, this story has some things we understand and some things we don't. We don't understand why God accepts Abel's offering and rejects Cain's. Oh, there has been a lot of speculation. <coughs> some say, excuse me, that Cain's heart wasn't truly behind his gift. But the truth is that the Bible tells us only that Abel was accepted and Cain was not. For God's own reasons, God chose. And that part of the story makes us a bit uncomfortable. We'd rather have a God we could control, who's going to do what we expect, who's going to respond the right way if we say the right words and make the right offerings. But you see, if that were the case, then we'd be controlling God. God would be dancing to our tune. And that's not how it is. We're not in charge of things, as uncomfortable as that makes us. God is. Period. But Cain can't live with that. Or rather, Cain can't live with Abel. And the only way he found to ease his pain was to kill his brother. Out of sight, out of mind, he probably thought. With Abel gone, I won't have to think about it anymore. With Abel gone, God will have to choose me. And we're a lot like Cain right there, too. At the very heart of it all, Cain was mostly concerned about himself. That's at the very heart of sin, isn't it? We're so concerned for ourselves that we don't see anyone else. Our wants, our way, is more important than anything or anyone else. It's about us, and it's a hunger that consumes us. Sin's desire is for you, God says to Cain, like a ravenous wolf at the door. In the end, the truth is known and Cain is driven out. The one who so feared rejection by God is in the end driven away and that's when the story takes its most interesting turn Cain begs and pleads fearing for his life out on his own he'll be fair game for anybody 
So God places a mark on Cain. We don't know what it was, but we do know what it meant. It meant, Cain is mine. And all who saw it knew that Cain belonged to God and left him in peace. On Ash Wednesday, we gather for worship and we have black marks placed on our heads. It's a mark meant to remind us of who we are, a mark to remind us of how we are like Cain, meant to remind us of our sin. But there's more, because in just that same place where that black mark sits on Ash Wednesday, there's a deeper mark. It's the mark placed on us in our baptism, the mark of God claiming us as God's own. Child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. You see, that was the gift of Cain's mark. Even though his crimes were bad and drove him away, Cain was still under God's care. No matter how Cain forsook God, God never forsook Cain. And that's true for us as well. We are God's children. We belong to God no matter what. We belong to God forever. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.